G'day everyone, it's SDS Supercoach, providing Supercoach content for you. I'm here to present my round 22 review for AFL Supercoach 2023. And uh, I'm currently sitting in a very nice position. Uh, we are ranked 794th. Our score was 2,362. So I'm very happy with how this season's going. This is my best ever rank. So uh, just hopefully I can just stay inside that top 1K. That's all I really care about. And if I can win some of my leagues as well, that's a good little side bonus there. I'm in nine out of, te- nine out of 10 leagues remaining. So um, my glasses are fogging up. So that's fun. It's bloody hot in my room, so um, I can still see uh, just a little bit. The quality isn't so great with my eyes these days, but um, look, I think how this season's gone, considering I was 81K to start the year, this has turned out to be a pretty good result. So uh, very happy with this. If I can can stay inside the top 1K, then that's great. Um, I'm still in 9 out of 10 leagues, so I did get knocked in one of my leagues this week. wasn't the greatest week, but I'm just happy to go up in rank. So not too many complaints there. There was one main issue with my side, uh, and that which was the reasoning I um, didn't have as good of a week compared to some other weeks, but we went up the rank, so it's not that big of a deal. So um, actually, I'll undo changes. Let's fix up the team. It's not really too much to do with our side because I am on zero trades. So what does that mean? Well, that means I have zero trades. Uh, I used my last I used my last one last week. I traded Nick Dacos to Luke Jackson. So it was between Jackson and Butters. In hindsight, just due to the high ownership with Zach Butters, I really should have gone with him just to break just to match up where everyone else has got him. But unfortunately, I mean, it's not unfortunate. Luke Jackson did score a 124 for me, which was really good, but I'd prefer Zach Butters. So I do regret that. I, and uh, it's not a good feeling anti-potting him for the last two weeks of the season. I'd rather just have Zach Butters. And, um, but it is what it is. Luke Jackson, 124 is still perfectly fine. I don't really know why I'm complaining. Um, look, let's quickly go through the team. As we all know, there's not too much to talk about at this point in the year. I'd love to know if anyone has any trades left. Uh, I'd be very surprised. I, I would have assumed that Dacos would have been uh, the last hope for anyone to have any trades left. So James Sicily, 96. They did put Roy West to him this week. So that did limit his ability to move around the ground. Tom Stewart, 69. Yeah, had a decent first quarter, but past that, he just really couldn't get his hands on the pill there. Jack Sinclair, 115, was uh, pretty good. Didn't watch much of this Saints-Tigers game. Uh, Will Day, 98. Um, I think he was on 100 or three-quarter time. I thought he did uh, a lot better in the last quarter to just get a minus two, but uh, whatever. I think he uh, made a few mistakes by... Uh, with ball in hand. So I think that was the main problem. Uh, Harry Chase, 135. This was fantastic. Is this his best score of the year? It actually is. That's unbelievable. So that's great from Harry Chase. Uh, just for a first year player to continue uh, to be pretty consistent is really good. So I'm pretty happy with Chase. And I'm uh, ideally, I wouldn't want him, but. Um, Look, we ran our trades and look, Harry Cheese was doing perfectly fine. So um, he did score a bad score last week, but he still got that role. Uh, they just kept feeding him the ball. I think Essen are actually pretty easy to concede as a side. So maybe something we can look at for the vice captain and captain in the last two weeks. Harry Himmelberg, A9. Look, the role's great, but he just butchers it a lot. Um, gets a lot of the, yeah, he gets the ball a lot, but it's just, he butchers it all the time. So, Look, I'm happy with the role that he's got. It's just this could be so much better than what he's currently scoring, but it's not a disaster. He's not he's not really giving us any scores below 80 at this point now. Oh, he gave us bad score there. But that I've owned him since the Melbourne game, and he's given us one score below 80. So I think that's all right. Like considering how much we paid for him, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, doubt these blokes will get back in the side. Marcus Bontempelli, 115. Uh, he had a massive last quarter. He was pretty quiet up until three quarter time, but he had a massive last quarter to, to give uh owners and more importantly, captain is a really good score there. Christian Petrarca, 107. 
gee, that scaling would have gone up if uh, he kicked that goal. But uh, apparently it was touched uh, from Marchbank. I won't get too much into that, but gee, not too, not too sure how touched that was. Um, Zach Merritt, 96. Uh, he was my vice captain. Curtis Taylor ran around him all uh, with him all day. So it's probably pretty tough. It was actually pretty impressive to see him get to 96 with a hard tag all game. So, uh, oh, well, uh, Rory Laird, 121, pretty good. Now, this is what hurt me this week. And this is what's going to hurt me the coming week because Libertore, he was on seven a quarter time. So he wasn't going to set the world on fire. I think Finn McGuinness did, uh, because he was getting tagged in the first quarter by McGuinness, but I think they took McGuinness to Bailey Dale in the second quarter. And uh, the second that tag got shrugged, uh, Liberal was getting a little bit of the ball. And then he got uh, concussed by Connor Nash's knee. Uh, so that ruled him out for the rest of the game. And it rules him out for this week. So not only do we get a 20, he misses the following week against West Coast. So, And that was a big bargaining point for him to come into my team uh, a couple of weeks ago. So that really hurts. The fact that Lib is out against West Coast where he could have gone super well. So that's a bit frustrating and also gave me a bad score this week, but Hey, what can you do? Uh, look, it's just unlucky. Um, it wasn't a bad score just on a four quarter performance. It was just really unlucky. And he also misses this week. So that just sucks. Um, Brayshaw 102. I, I didn't watch much of the West Coast Fremantle game just because I was watching the Carlton Melbourne game, which was on at the same time. But I believe that Xavier O'Neill was running around with Andy Brayshaw all day. So for him to get to 102, that's pretty good. Uh, Jordan Dawson, 111, very solid. He's He's been a very good pick this year. Uh, finally got him in at about round nine. So it's been good to have him since. Might have been a bit later than that, actually. Um, Lockie Neal, he's been really poor over the past four, four months and five weeks, so I'd roughly say. He's given us one ton in the last five weeks. So although that's got to do with tagging, but yeah, I don't know. I think this could be potentially the end of us picking Lockie Neal on our sides. Uh, just not quite. Uh, he's starting to get up there in age. Um, I think he's slowing down a bit. So probably a guy we're not going to be picking in our teams next year, considering all the other forwards that we're going to be able to get into our midfield, the defenders that we're going to be able to get into our midfield. The midfield next year is going to be super high scoring. So, um, yeah, it's going to be really tough to think who the top eight mids are going to be for next year, but we'll worry about next year when it comes because, look, I'm enjoying the game as it is. There's only a couple more rounds to go, but we don't get we don't get to actually play the game for basically five and a half months, eight, and actually six months. So, Enjoy it while you can because um, uh, we do miss it uh, when the season's done. So, oh, yeah, by the way, I'll I'll get uh, – I'll talk about that later. Uh, Tim English, uh, captained him this week, 143. Super happy with that. I just thought it was between Bont and English. And, by the way, I was really lucky because I was like, uh, kind of considering Libertore. So, that – Having English as captain really did her, uh, help because that was the best possible option. So 143, I'm super happy with that. Um, he's just an absolute gun. He's going to be so expensive next year, but whatever. Uh, Ron Marshall, 146, super good. Also, I thought English would be a good captain just because there's only one of the Hawthorne rucks there. I know Reeves is restrictive, but I think it's more restrictive when the two rucks are playing. So I just thought, I didn't think he would score this well. I just thought he, he could get me a really solid 110, that sort of thing. Uh, Rowan Marshall, 146, super good. So he clearly had a fantastic game against the Tigers and a good win for the Saints. If they win this week, they are pretty much locked up for finals. So uh, Rowan Marshall going up against, uh, because Stanley's hurt, Segler's injured, and I believe Toby Conway's also injured. And Blitzarves, of course, as well. So uh, Shannon Neal, I believe, is the only ruck left on Geelong's list. And uh, Rowan Marshall's going up against him this week. So we'll talk about vice-captain and captains a bit later. Uh, Errol Gould, 90. 
Uh, solid as a rock again. I think Tuk tagged him. The tags are coming back, guys. Uh, it, it's a bit harder to gauge. Now, this pissed me off. Josh, Josh Dunkley, when I held you for two weeks, I know you were good for the first two, but, mate, what's going on? I believe, I, I've got a feeling he, he's still going to be playing injured. He has to be. He is lowering his average down for next year, so that's pretty handy, but um, he's a little bit more, Is not everyone owns him anymore, so it does hurt a little bit more when he gives us these really poor scores. I can cop low hundreds and all that, but mate, come on. Uh, we can't be copping 62s around here, especially for a caliber, uh, especially for such a high caliber player like yourself there. Connor Rosie, really good. Um, he's just extremely consistent. And that's what I love about Rosie. His lowest score this year was 84. He's played all year. Look, he's just so consistent. So I wouldn't mind starting him next year, to be honest. Like, He's done nothing wrong at all next year, uh, this year. Luke Jackson, 124. He was my trade-in for Nick Dacos. I just basically put Himmelberg into the back line. There you have it. So Luke Jackson, 124. Thought he'd go a little bit better against Bailey Williams, but I'm not complaining. Um, he should be a massive pod for the rest of uh, the final two weeks of the Supercoach season. So we'll see how he goes. He's going up against um, Finlayson or Vince. Visitini or Hayes or whichever Port Ruck is available uh, this week. So that should be really good for him to get us a really nice score. Um, if if English can score 143 against Reeves in uh, last week, then I think that Hawks-Ruck matchup might be a bit easier for him in round 24. So we'll see how he goes. Uh, never picking this bloke again. Darcy Cameron had a couple. Of, he just, I just don't like how inconsistent he is. He's really good on his day, but he can just drop in a few stinkers. So probably a bloke I won't be picking again, to be honest. Too injury prone, too inconsistent. Just don't really like it. Tim Taranto, 95. Uh, just really dropped off over the past six weeks of the season. Ever since the buy came, he just hasn't been the, been the same. So uh, that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, and then we've got Ben Keys and Matty Roberts on the bench with Marich injured. Hopefully Marich isn't injured for too much longer because I'm fearing that Matty Roberts is going to get dropped for Braden Campbell this week. Maybe if he could be the sub, I don't know, because, uh, I don't know, just be another uh, bench cover player, just in case I get more than one injury. So, look, what a, uh, this is all we're really going to do with our side. So, Libba is going to be benched. Um, So, we know he'll miss this week, just due to the concussion protocols. My vice captain, captain. Now there are a lot of good, good options. I in my book, a lot of really good options. So we have got. Uh, if you want to go for a VC on the Friday night, I believe Lockie Neal's probably the best one. Um, just because Collingwood's midfield, it's tough, but it's not as tough as it was like a month ago. Um. Anyway, uh, look, I, I don't really like... Uh, Tim Taranto's not in good enough form to consider him. I like Zach Merritt against GWS, but the only fear is Ward could tag. But usually I'd quite like this matchup, so I, I don't mind Merritt as a vice-captain. Um, now, this is where the interesting options come in because there are some really nice captain options I really like. So Rory Laird on the Saturday night, I think he can do well against the Swans. Um, Rowan Marshall without the Geelong Rucks and he's going to be rucking up against Shannon Neal. I do like a lot, but we don't know what the, we don't really know how Shannon Neal scores as a solo ruck, but he is, um, he is young into his career. So I'd expect Rowan Marshall could go pretty well there. And also don't forget St. Kilda's leaky back line, Tom Stewart, like he could be an awesome vice captain as well. So we, Laird, Stewart, Marshall, and even Merritt, they're all really good Saturday night vice captain options. So, and then the Sunday, uh, by the way, Luke Jackson's a pretty handy captain option, but I don't think many are going to go that route just due to what uh, the dogs, English and Bontempelli going up against West Coast. It's just more about who do you want to captain between Bont and, or English. I think I'm going to go English. So, Look, early days, I'm thinking the two rucks uh, who are just in fantastic form. Marshall into English is what I'm considering. I like Tom Stewart. I like Rory Laird. 
and I like Zach Merritt and I also like Luke Jackson. So it's a bit of a tough one because there's a lot of good options this week. So, but yeah, that's probably what I'm looking at. Liver bench keys comes on. So I think a lot of people would have been in a uh, worse situations where they might have to field a Fletcher or a Roberts. So I don't feel awful about keys, but it just sucks that Liber misses this West Coast game. So that's pretty frustrating. Um, Now, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, we can talk about leagues and all that. So I am in, I'm still in nine out of 10 leagues. All these leagues, I'm in the prelim. And unfortunately, I did get knocked out by Toddy's Toys in the Spiller Supercoach Division 1 League. Now, that's, um, now what really didn't help me here was uh, Libba. So, this is where Libba cost me with his 20. Lost by about 60 points or so. Uh, but Libba's 20 just really cost me there. So, GG to Todd. So, I'm out of the Spillers League. Really good league, by the way. That that's That's got a lot of good coaches in it. And uh, I bet, uh, sorry again to Jono, but I did um, nab him again in the SCS Times Pro 2023 Supercoach League as well. So that's the league with me and Brad. So I guess we can go over a couple of them. So let's have a look at the final series. So I'm going up against uh, Stuart Smith-Fitz, who is going really well. Yes, rank 153. That's going to be tough. That's really going to be tough for me to win that. So hopefully it's a good matchup. I would have... Pre- I think I would have given myself more of a chance if I had Libba, but uh, we'll see how we go there. But that's a really nice matchup. Shout out to Ryan for having such a good season. And then for the SDS Supercoach League, where I'm looking to go back to back in this league, I'm going up against uh, the number one uh, in Riley. So I know he's on Twitter a fair bit. So shout out to Riley. So best of luck for this week as well. Um, and yeah, I'm in a lot of finals, a lot of prelims. So I really am hoping that I can get the job done in most of them this, this week, especially this money league. I'd love to win this money league because I need the money. Um, is there anything else to address? I don't, uh, think so. I guess I can go over a couple things. Um, if you're in an FPL, I do play a bit of that, but that's more of a hobby of mine. I'm not really going to post content on that. I'll leave Eno to that. Uh, but I'm off to a good start. Um, I'm on 74 points at the minute with Rashford and uh, who's the other one? Bruno Fernandez to go. So that's I'm pretty happy with that. It was looking pretty dire, but uh, we got some really good results with our players this week. Supercoach have announced that NBL Supercoach is going to be unveiled for this coming season so i will be looking to play that and i've had some talks with um supercoach with dr who's an absolute legend and uh causa Corey blackage so uh black ledge and um we might be able we might be doing some nbl supercoach content for uh nbl supercoach content for the coming season the debut season of nbl supercoach so if you are interested in the NBL, then um, we might be looking to do that. Might be looking to do if um, Marrera's Magic is doing finals fantasy, um, then I might be looking to do a little bit of content on that as well. Um, AFLW, I will be playing AFLW fantasy as well, but I'm probably going to not upload um, just because I don't watch en- enough of the game. So it's uh, one. You get so invested in the footy season, then you just sort of need a bit of a break. I'll watch the final series and all that, but uh, you do sometimes get a bit footy it out. So um, I will be playing that, but uh, I just don't watch. I just don't watch enough games, so I'll probably give that a pass for this season. I'll, I will be playing, but not not content wise. I might do a draft with um, my man, uh, my mate Liam, who knows a load about AFLW, and he's got some exciting news. If I get him on the channel. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So I hope you guys had a good week as well. Let me know how you guys went. Um, if you got Doherty or Libba with a spare trade, oh, not Doherty. If you have Libba and also one trade left, just trade him. Um, you may as well just use that trade. So look, yeah, hopefully I can finish inside the top 1k this season. Thank you guys very much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Sorry if there's been a lack of content as of late. It's just a bit hard to think of what to do. I also went on the live stream as well with DR on the Friday. I was actually going to upload a preview, but um, DR invited me onto the stream. So I jumped on there. So on the Friday at 5.30. So 
look, anyway, I'll leave it there, guys. Hope you did well this week, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Have a good one.